Hi, so my name's Daniel, and I'm, uh, so I'm the Beaver Field Officer for Devon Wildlife Trust. Before I talk about beavers, though, what does a beaver field officer actually do? <laughs> so when I went to school, I don't think my career advisor mentioned anything about beavers. Um, I'm, I'm only three weeks into the role, actually, so it's all, it's, all, <laughs> it's all quite new. But a significant component of my job is basically working... Um, working really closely with, with landowners. So landowners that have beavers living on their land. Um, and a large part of that is largely kind of educating um, the landowners um, about the ecology and the biology of beavers and also some of the mitigation measures that are in place as well. So it's just to reassure them because actually we haven't had beavers living in this landscape for, for well over 400 years now. And it is actually a, a quite a scary, it can be a quite a scary prospect for some people. So that is a significant component of my role. Um, other aspects is wider public engagement. And also another aspect is sharing our lessons learned uh, with other groups across the UK. So at the moment, the River Otter is actually the only authorised um, catchment in the UK um, that beavers can live in. But we've got plenty of groups across the UK who are really interested in kind of copying what we're doing here. So yesterday I was meeting with a group from the Isle of Wight, for example, and we were just going through um, the various issues, talking to landowners with them, and going through that process. So my focus is um, predominantly on the River Otter. Um, so this map here shows the distribution and how that's changed basically over the last eight years. So we currently have, um, at the last count, 20 territories of beavers, and you can see now that um, those beavers are, are covering most of the catchment, so all the way from kind of Bubby Solston, Otterton Mill at the south, which is one of the most popular places to look at beavers, all the way up to um, Otterhead Lakes, uh, which is the source of the otter there. Um, and so each territory could contain anywhere between one and ten beavers. On average, it's five, uh, five or six beavers, so we're talking something in the region of 100, 150 beavers on the river otter. Enough about me and my job, let's talk about beavers. So beavers are actually surprisingly, surprisingly large animals. Um, they're a good metre long, maybe pushing a metre and a half actually with the tail as well. And a, an adult beaver could easily be well over 20 kilos, possibly even pushing 30 kilos in some cases. So they're, they're big animals um, and you know they, they make an impact and they're quick. Um, as this video shows here, they're entirely herbivorous, um, so they'll eat bark and roots in the winter, but in the summertime, actually, they'll spend most of their time kind of munching. We've got brookline here, um, watercress, and, and, and plants predominantly, so actually, it can be harder to identify their activity in the summertime because they're not felling trees, and actually, they can be, and the vegetation is generally longer, so they can be a lot more difficult to identify. Um, well adapted to semi-aquatic lifestyle, so they're most comfortable when they're in the water. They will move across land as well. Um, so beavers, in terms of their, their kind of ecology and their biology, they're extremely territorial. Um, so they form territories which are made up of a, of a male and a female, and then usually one or two years, usually two years worth of kits. And they might have three or four kits in each year. So that's why you've got kind of seven or eight beavers usually in one in one territory. They 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 do most of their activity at night, um, and they live in burrows and lodges. So they they use this technique of feeding called central foraging, where we call it central foraging technique. So in most territories, they'll have a central lodge which they'll use as their base, and then they will kind of move from that. And in a way. This really helps me because actually a large part of my job is almost working as a wildlife detective. So I'm going on to a pizza, somebody's land where beavers have arrived. I'm trying to work out the extent of the territory, how many animals are there, and almost kind of preempting where they might do certain activities. And all of this information is really helpful for me. So we'll use things like camera traps, feeding signs, and all of these different things to try and second guess what, you know, what beavers are doing on that particular bit of land. So in terms of benefits of beavers, I think you know, most people here are probably well aware of that. This is a really good example. So I'm going to show you a series of maps. 
um, spanning a period of about, I think it's six years. So this is, this is an area within one of the original enclosures. And it shows, in 2011, you basically start with a, a very straight, unnatural river system with, with a, a pond here. This is, I think this was originally Colm Grassland, so it's in North Devon. Within a year, it's already changed. Within six years, you've got what we call a beaver complex. So you've got the black lines here, solid black lines representing dams. And then you've got the gray polygons representing pools that have accumulated behind the dams. And then in addition to that, you've got these light gray lines down here and these are canal systems. The one thing people don't know is actually beavers are pretty good diggers. So they, they will form their, their pools here and they'll be spreading the water outward through these canal systems here. So you, you end up this really complex habitat. Um, and I'll just show you, so this is, a, this is a drone footage of that same area, which just gives you a much better idea of actually what, what it looks like. It's quite quick, so uh, is, is everyone ready? Okay, on your marks, get set, go. So this is a particularly big beaver complex, and one thing I would say is very difficult to generalise a beaver complex or territory because they vary so much depending on the beavers and the actual the location of where they are. But the, the key things you can see here, standing water, this is what we were talking about earlier, so it's just so much standing water, standing and felled dead wood, amazing for invertebrates. The other crucial thing you can see here is just a complex of vegetation. So you can see on this side, we've got a predominantly, um, it's millennia, so purple moorgrass um, habitat, but here near where it's even wetter, you're getting more of a rush pasture habitat. So you've just got this amazing complex of different habitat types. In terms of the benefits, we're really lucky now. I, I've come into this job, um, you know, the, the beavers have been on the otter now for kind of well, 15 years. 10 years ago, we conducted our five-year trial with the University of Exeter, where they really thoroughly studied the benefits of beavers. And this is just one example of, of uh, quantifying, basically, how this complex of dams and water systems really just slows that flow of water before. If you imagine before this complex was here, any water from the top of the site would move to from the top to the bottom, probably within a matter of minutes, whereas now, you know, you might be talking hours or days, actually, before that water is, is moving across that same space. Um, this is just a slide to show um, the impact of dams in terms of catching sediment. Um, not only are dams great at catching sediment, but also there's, there's evidence to suggest that they're also catching uh, various nutrients, so nitrogen, nitrogen and phosphorus as well. And then finally, I think this is my final slide, but I, I, as I was sharing the stage with, with our friends um, from the Waterfall Project, I just wanted a slide that represented the biodiversity benefits of beavers. And there are so many, I, it's really difficult to choose which one, but there's a, a really interesting study happening on the River Tail, which is one of the tributaries of the otter. And it's shown how over time, um, water voles, which were present before, have expanded across the complex with the with the beavers. So as the beavers have been producing these canals, it's just produced this so much more space where they can burrow and feed. And also it's, it's almost like a natural predator control as well. Whereas before you have a, a straight river, the predators can just walk down that river, pick off their water bowls. Now you've got this complex of water and it's just so much more difficult. And there's, there's so many other things, um, other ways they benefit. Um, but yeah, I think that's, hopefully that's just a, a nice summary of, of kind of what I do in my role and kind of where we're at with, with beavers on, on the river. Okay. Mm.